Early on in the pandemic, Spain was hit just about as hard as anywhere in Europe. Now in the capital, Madrid, the health system's under renewed pressure. With COVID-19 cases rising, one in five hospital beds in the region is now taken up by someone with coronavirus. Is that... We are saturated with people who need health care and patients that need care. We are doing the best we can, but we need more health workers. We need more resources. Spain's one of many European nations now bringing in localised lockdowns, worried about a second wave of COVID over winter months. For this bus driver bringing his son in for a test, it's the right approach. I understand that we need to save the economy and move forward, but health is the most important thing. Without health, we don't have money. In the Czech Republic, there were more than 3,000 new cases on Thursday. Adjusted for population, only Spain and France within the European Union have seen a bigger jump in the last two weeks. Now bars are having their opening hours reduced, and in Prague, people will have to wear a face covering at outdoor events with more than 100 attending. In the UK, COVID cases have doubled in a week, and health officials are worried about rises in infections and hospital admissions among all ages. Next week, people in more regions will be told not to mix with other households, just like nearly two million in the northeast of England have. I think it's a farce, because on one hand, you've got people who can go on holidays, you've got people who can go into gyms, you've got people who can go into restaurants and pubs up to 10 o'clock at night, but you can't have your own family to your house. I mean, I don't understand it. Where's the sense in it? Where's the logic? If we, hadn't, if we hadn't come out of lockdown too early or people that have been taking more note, we wouldn't be in this position. Now we'd be further down the line. The UK government's considering warnings from its scientific advisers that restrictions may have to be imposed across England next month to drive down transmission. We are now seeing uh, a second wave uh, coming in. We've seen it in, in France, we've seen it in Spain, across, across Europe. It's been absolutely, uh, I'm afraid, inevitable that we would see it in this country. In Scotland, the First Minister's calling this the most decisive moment since March. We might now be on at an earlier uh, stage on a similar path to that that has been taken in recent weeks by France. So our task is to make sure, if we can, that we interrupt that and we don't end up where they are now. Here in London, the Mayor Sadiq Khan is warning that the city is about two weeks behind those regions of England already under local lockdown. He's also hit out at problems experienced by Londoners needing a Covid test, citing government incompetence. Across Europe, governments are having to act fast, winter's approaching and with it predictable pressures on public health facilities. But persuading the public to abide by new curbs on their freedom could prove a tough challenge. Nadine Barber, Al Jazeera, London. Jeff Slegomorch is director for the National Centre for Disaster Preparedness at Columbia University. He's joining us on Skype from Manchester in Connecticut. Good to have you with us again, Jeff. Um, given the fact that we are at the stage that we are at now and we're seeing this spike in uh, numbers around the world, the previous time one gets the impression, particularly from Nadim's uh, report, that it was the lockdowns that really, if didn't put things into a halt, they at least slowed them down. Is a lockdown the only way to get control of this again? Well, it's certainly one of the most effective ways, especially when you're seeing really significant increases and in really sort of out of control spread of the virus. What you're essentially doing is you're uh, denying it the opportunity to jump from one person to another. And so very significantly suppressing that transmission, which then gives you options for relaxing restrictions and kind of getting parts of the economy going again. It's a very caustic tool. It's very traumatic to, to society in the short run. Uh, but when you see the numbers running away like that, it can be a very effective tool and ultimately lead to more options in the long run. If we do bring in more lockdowns around the world, is there not a risk that we are going to be in this situation again when, again, those lockdowns, those second lockdowns, are eventually um, started to li be lifted? So there are sort of two sides to that. One is that pandemics often come in waves. So no matter how effective you are in the first wave, it has a way of sort of traveling around and coming back again and again. So I think no matter what, you do have to be ready to, to know what your options are for responding to subsequent waves. But more directly, uh, will it bounce back right away or not? That has a lot to do with what you do after the lockdown. Are people taking personal responsibility to continue to social distance, to continue to wear masks, taking the relaxed restrictions, but those restrictions still in place seriously? to keep uh, that transmission low so you can start to gradually open up more and more, um, although still a ways off from getting back to normal. 
Are we in a different situation now when we're considering more lockdowns and certainly with regard to the virus as we were when the first lockdowns were introduced? Absolutely. I think there are two things, one working for us, one working against us. The first is that we know a lot more about this virus. There's still a lot we don't know, but the modes of transmission, the rates of transmission, even treatment and, and um, what signals to look for in terms of how serious it is, uh, is all uh, a little bit better defined now that it's been going on for a while, which means that maybe total lockdowns might not be as necessary. Maybe there are some key points within the community um, where you, before you have to get to that point of total lockdowns, you can do uh, less severe measures. But the other piece that's going to work against us is really just this ongoing fatigue, particularly in very uh, individualistic cultures and, and societies, people, you know, really uh, craving their individual freedom. Uh, we've been at this for a long time. People are getting tired. They're exhausted. They're feeling a lot of pain from uh, the lack of social interaction, some of the economic pressure. And I think it's going to make it that much harder for people to adhere to the lockdowns and uh, uh, take yet another hit for, for the greater good. Jeff Slagamoch is director for the National Center of Disaster Preparedness at Columbia University. Jeff, as always, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Always good to talk.